6 in the afternoon, Tokyo time, in the middle of what witnesses called a beautiful, calm day. Terrified business workers scrambled to safety when the tremors hit. Debris and office equipment falling everywhere. In the streets, chaos, as residents tried to dodge bricks and glass crashing to the ground. Japan is no stranger to earthquakes, with reinforced building designs like nowhere else in the world. But this one was a monster, measuring a magnitude of 8.9, one of the strongest in the country's history. An American University professor in Tokyo on business told us the tremors were relentless. The shaking got worse and worse. Uh, I don't know exactly how long it lasted. It seemed like it went on forever. The country's Prime Minister, Naoto Khan, immediately activated an emergency response plan. After the shaking came the warning. And the wave, a chilling preview of the disaster to come. The target, the city of Sendai, some 200 miles northeast of Tokyo. Hundreds are reported missing there. An unbelievable sight, the force of the swirling water sucking boats into its center. Reports of at least one vessel missing with 100 people aboard. The tsunami hit with incredible force, the sludge sweeping away everything in its path. This wall of water and mud some 30 feet high washed across the low-lying coastal areas. Entire towns swept away, thick and brown, strewn with debris. Fast-moving, farmlands quickly disappeared. Entire major roads, bridges and homes, gone in a matter of minutes. The airport at Sendai was completely destroyed. Workers and others scrambled onto rooftops trying to stay above the mud. A huge fire in an oil refinery near Tokyo continues to burn. At least 80 other massive fires are still burning along the coastline after the quake cut off gas lines, causing a series of explosions leaving homes and businesses ablaze. Power is out throughout parts of the country, and mass transit is down. In some places, trains derailed. Tonight, evacuations are underway for miles around this nuclear power plant in Fukushima. Officials say the cooling system failed during the jolt. Authorities now say that radiation levels have surged outside the plant. With daybreak here, the search for dead and injured of this disaster is just beginning. Not to mention the cleanup, which will likely take months, if not years. Although most of the public transportation here in the capital... The parliamentary session, and uh, on the screen flashed a warning saying that a big earthquake was hitting um, Japan. And sh shortly after that, 30 seconds afterwards, we started to feel the shake. Uh, the shake was so, it got to be so big that you couldn't stand uh, without uh, losing your balance. It's hard uh, to see a beautiful sunny day on the side street where we've set up shop, but is the rest of the country in kind of a state of suspended animation? I've seen pictures of the bullet train just frozen in place on its tracks. Uh, yeah, that's correct. Uh, people are still stranded in train stations, uh, e even here in Tokyo. Uh, people are still dazed, uh, especially since we don't know the full uh, scale of, of the damage that the, this uh, tsunami earthquake has caused. And your uh, errata of, in, in Tokyo itself, we saw buildings absolutely swaying back and forth. Uh, the damage, of course, much less in the city than it is in the agricultural zone to the north, correct? That's correct, that's correct. But the buildings did uh, shake quite a bit here. Arata Yamamoto is our uh, longtime bureau chief. In the fear is, if that is, that if Japanese officials have lost control of these two reactors, the reactors could be on a path to a meltdown. Now, the concern focuses on those two plants in Fukushima, 150 miles north of Tokyo, which has a population of some 30 million people, 50 miles from Sendai, home to 1 million people. Officials ordered residents in a six-mile area of the plants to evacuate. The reactors in question are boiling water reactors designed by General Electric, one of the part owners of NBC Universal. The problem started with a power outage caused by the earthquake. It caused the cooling systems to fail. 
<coughs> excuse me, that system sends water to lower the temperature of the fuel. There should be two backup systems, diesel generators and 125 volt batteries, but apparently those aren't working. If the cooling system is interrupted, the fuel can overheat, melt, and release a large amount of radioactivity. Brian? All right, Ann Thompson with this new... This earthquake occurred along what's known as the Pacific Ring of Fire. That is a 25,000 mile string of volcanic and seismic, seismic activity right here. 90% of the world's earthquakes and 80% of tsunamis happen right in that ring of fire. The most recent one, you recall, was in Christchurch, New Zealand, right here just last month. Japan sits to the north, of course, but Japan sits at the intersection of three different tectonic plates. They are the Eurasian, the Philippine, and the Pacific plates. Today's earthquake, as you can see, was about 80 miles or so offshore. The edge of the Pacific plate in the middle got wedged underneath the Eurasian plate on which Japan sits. That's called subduction. The grinding of those plates pushes up the ocean floor, which generates a massive shock wave, and that shock wave ripples out and creates the actual tsunami. As that tsunami travels towards the shoreline, it hits the continental shelf right about there. The waves get much higher. They pick up speed. They reach those jet airplane speeds, 500 miles per hour or more, by the time the tsunami then washes ashore. We want to show you also the wave projections from NOAA showing the wave heights. The black right here represents the, the, the highest waves, 30 feet or so off the coast of Japan. But then you can see what happens as the tsunami comes westward. Hawaii, 3,800 miles away, is right there, and we saw waves of 7 to 8 feet or so. By the time the waves moved offshore and onto the Pacific coast of the United States, really nothing of concern at all. They dissipated. But Japan is one of the most earthquake-prone nations in the world, accounting for 20% of all quakes greater than 6.0. Brian? All right, Tom Costello in our Washington Bureau with that explainer. Tom, thanks. Japan may be... ...nine hours after the earthquake. Tsunami sirens and reverse 911 calls jolted many out of bed early this morning as evacuations were ordered in Oregon and Washington State. But as you mentioned, it was Hawaii that was hit first. Sirens there also sent residents scrambling to higher ground. Homes and cars were destroyed. But the damage there was minimal, as it was it across much of the West Coast, fortunately. Brian? Amazing how small the planet Earth can seem when you're waiting for something to come all the way across the Pacific. Miguel, thanks for your contribution to our coverage tonight. And, and transportation lifelines and caused billions of dollars in damage. And as the Los Angeles County Fire Search and Rescue Team learned recently in New Zealand, an earthquake doesn't have to be the big one to be deadly. The Christ Church quake, magnitude 6.3, was close to the surface, the ground shaking violent. Buildings re resemble Los Angeles, California. There are some buildings that, right next to buildings that are down, that have survived the earthquake. A warning for Californians. Even with building codes that focus on seismic safety, many structures are still no match for violent quakes. Among the 72 members of the team, experts in water rescue because of all the tsunami flooding. Brian? George Lewis.